hand function under the participant tab um, for questions. JJ, you're up first. Jeff, after you went back and watched the film, what kind of jumped out at this game to you? Um, I was really disappointed. You know, we kicked the ball out of bounds just to start the game off, which was just a – I know that doesn't seem like much, but it's a gut punch for one of your very best players. You know, we kick it out of bounds. Hunter's a great player. Uh, then defensively, you know, we, we didn't play very well the first half. We gave up 240 yards. 17 points. That's very unlike us. Uh, and we just didn't play good team football. You know, start for the kick. Didn't play very good defense. Three and out on offense. Only 10 snaps the first quarter. And um, that was what was disappointing the most to me was we just didn't play very good team football. We complimented each other almost for 28 quarters. Um, and we didn't compliment each other very well. We punted the ball down to the one-yard line, give up a big drive again. Uh, offensively, uh, they did a great job against us. They, they put nine in the box and just dared us to throw the ball down the field. Uh, we missed two of those throws, but the other six were 50-50 balls. And the only 50-50 ball we won, they ruled we were out of bounds uh, when we called it. Uh, so we didn't win a 50-50 ball. And, uh, so all that, and I didn't do a good enough job, obviously, it's my responsibility. And I never wanted it to ever sound like it's uh, my kids. Obviously, our kids are always what makes the game, but it's on me to have them ready. Curious about those six 50-50 balls. Can you describe those a little bit more? What, what, what kind of makes those kind of 50-50? Um, well, because the way they're playing defense, JJ, they're just giving you one-on-one. -on -one you're not going to get a better play call than one-on-one. -on -one. Very rarely in college football or pro football or high school football, for that matter, do they just turn you totally loose and it's just nobody there. Occasionally there's a bust, but most of the time they're going to be pretty assignment sound. And uh, we had six chances of where the ball was on or near the kid, uh, the athlete, the player. And uh, we didn't win any of those. And we've got to win some of those. Along those lines, how would you assess the way Frank Harris played at quarterback for you guys? And do you feel like you, the whole offense kind of needs to help him out a little bit more? Yeah, Frank played well enough for us to win. Uh, obviously, whenever the offense does not play well, Coach Lunny and Frank and me are going to take the most abuse, and that's always fair. Uh, all three of us get way too much credit when we do well, and we all get way too much blame when we don't do well. That's just the nature of the business. But if you go back and watch the game, are there a couple of throws, Frank, which he had back? Sure. But he played really hard and competed the entire game. We didn't do enough to help him uh, in the outside lanes. We didn't protect him very well. And some of that's on coaching. Uh, FAU did a really good job on some schemes on their blitzes. Um, and, you know, to not to make excuses, but to have our seventh offensive line change up there. There's just a couple communication errors that they just hit us in the exact right spot. And uh, that's on me as the head coach, JJ. And so there's a little bit of that, a little bit of us not winning in some outside lanes, a little bit of just us not winning up front. Uh, it's what I always say. And I know y'all get tired of my 31 years of coaching motto quotes but it's never as bad as you think and it's never as good and I left the field feeling really bad about the way we played I still don't feel good about it but we're literally four or five plays away from just you know the, the penalty on the touchdown was an absolute killer the penalty on the late hit on our sideline those, those are two penalties worth 14 points um, us not getting a field goal right before halftime, but I had to use my timeouts to get us to – I was trying to just lengthen the, the game because we couldn't get the ball. Um, so I didn't have any timeouts in my pocket. And, you, know, you just can't take a sack in that situation. And uh, Frank knows that, and it just it just happened. So there's – all those plays are on me, though. So we got to get better. And let's don't forget, man, FAU was really good. 
And uh, I was really hoping we were going to take that next step and, and get in that elite club. And uh, we're not far away, but we're not there yet. We saw JoJo come in at the back end of the game. I know after the game you said you just wanted to get him some time. Will uh, Frank be the starter, and can you just kind of speak to what you saw from JoJo? Yeah, Frank's going to be the starter. Frank played well. That was not any indication of Frank Harris by me doing that. Uh, we need to see JoJo play. You know, he, he got thrown in the UAB game. Uh, wasn't real fair. He didn't get to practice much this week, so it really wasn't fair again. The kid just needs to play. Uh, I think it's important for the development of him uh, and me as a head coach here to watch all of our guys play with live bullets going around them. There's three positions I wish I never had to change. The O-line, you don't have to change those guys. And all we've done is change them. And it's never our choice. It's always been COVID or injury. Quarterback, we've had to change all of them. It's not been our choice. It has been COVID or injury. And I don't like to change our cornerbacks. I like for our two corners, if they get going, that's a dicey position out there. So those three positions, I don't – if you watch the rest of my our team, I like to sub a lot. I like for a lot of kids to play. Uh, I think it's good for morale. I think it's good for the team, development. There's a lot of reasons I believe in playing fresh players. But those are three positions I'd rather not make position changes. So when I do, it's a, it's a really big deal for me to make those moves personally. Okay, Greg, you're up. Jeff, when we talked after the game, you said the two key questions in film review would be, why didn't we run the ball better and why didn't we protect the quarterback better? What did you learn on those two when you went back and looked at it? Um, on the running, uh, they just really committed nine to the box. Um, we lost a few one-on-one -on -one matchups up front, but our line played better than you would think by the way we ran the ball. There was an extra hitter in there. Uh, number two on the, the question about the pass protection. Some of it uh, was scheme driven. Uh, FAU did a really good job of showing us some pressures uh, that we might not have got as many reps as we should have during the week. A um, couple of them were miscommunication on lineup changes where those kids playing the other spots would have been used to communicating that off and that we just didn't get it communicated very well. Um, That'd be what it what it was. Uh, lack of preparation by me as the head coach and some really good coaching. Uh, that that guy's been a good defensive coordinator for a long time, and he got us a few times. And in those kind of games, Greg, when when we here's what I tell my players every week. I'll give you a little insight here. Not that y'all really care, but there's 80 snaps in the game, right? If you go study it. There's about 10 snaps in every game that every coordinator goes, golly, I, I really – I bossed that one. That was not good. Uh, and y'all are in the stands going, golly, what was that? And that was bad. And there's 10 of them where you go, this should score. And you guys are going, man, that should have been a touchdown. The other 60, it's pretty much a stalemate. It's culture. It's a battle. It's winning your one-on-one -on -one matchup. It's making somebody miss. It's 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 all the stuff y'all get tired of hearing me talk about. It, it's culture. It, it win the day, triangle of toughness, and that's what that game was. They got us some, we got them some, and uh, on the plays that he dialed us up, Greg, they got home, and the plays where we made our calls, we didn't get home, and that's on me as a head coach to get our players more prepared. You touched on that offensive line situation with Maka and Kevin Davis switching spots. How did that hold up when you looked at it on film? Were you happy with what you got there? It was just what we had to do. And uh, he wasn't perfect, but for a young man to go back in there and he hadn't done that since his freshman year, that was pretty special. Especially what hadn't been talked about very much is the humidity and the rain and the, the grass field and how wet it was. And Kevin did a really good job. I think we had one bad snap the whole game, uh, and Frank still caught it. Uh, so much, much uh, credit to Kevin and Maka for being put in a really tough situation, and they played well enough for us to win. Is that an alignment you can stick with going forward?
right now and how well he heals and how fast he heals. Uh, but uh, Kevin did plenty enough for us to be okay there. Uh, those are two veteran linemen that are very, we're, you know, we're, we're getting closer. I know it's hard for y'all to tell. We're, we are getting closer uh, to getting this thing figured out up front. Uh, we're looking forward to having uh, Brandon Roth back pretty quick, uh, who was playing really well before he left. And we're hoping, you know, we're getting Brendan Brady back, Roth. We're, we're hoping our team, uh, we can get – we're – now, I told you all, those first four games were kind of like me learning my team. These last four, I've learned a whole lot more about our team. And I think you guys have as well. I think we're all kind of figuring it out. And these last four games, I really challenge our players that this needs to be a November to remember. Uh, and we have a real chance to make a statement uh, these last four games. Now, they're four good teams. Uh, Rice is way better than they have been. And uh, they're a very veteran group with a lot of players returning. You can tell they're just big, strong, physical kids. Hey, Chris, you're up. Hey, Coach, I'm writing about BYU, and I know you played them a few weeks back. Um, going back to that game, was there something they did extremely well that maybe surprised you? Is there something that people don't realize that, that they do really well? You can just tell, similar to Rice, it's their third year with all those kids. Uh, they're very mature, physical. Their old line is massive. The quarterback is an elite, elite quarterback. Uh, I think they're very well coached, too. I think they have some really nice offensive creativity with a lot of veteran kids. So you can make a lot of change-ups each week when you got a lot of veteran kids because they know your base offense so well. So when you add about five or six wrinkles, they can adjust and adapt to that very well. I think they do a very good job of that. Um, that would be what I, my takeaway from playing those guys. And, and their offense obviously has gotten a lot of attention, but the defense has been pretty good too. What did you make of their defense when you guys played? The, they're very sound. You know, they know they lack for uh, possibly great athleticism in the back end. So they use their huge front to play a very light box play a lot of zone back there in the back to keep everything in front of them. Uh, so I, I just think they, they compliment. He's done a really good job. He's a good human being too. The head coach is a great guy and their, their kids play the game the right way. And they're a team everybody should be rooting for they're, They do it right. Appreciate it. Jonas. Morning coach. Good morning, uh, Jonas. So you had said that uh, a little bit of lack of preparation against FAU. Um, do, does that, do you think that's a little bit more because of the, it was a travel week and having to go on the road for that? Or is it maybe a factor of, you know, not enough game film on this current season with it only being their third game? What fed into that lack of preparation on, on your end, do you think? Um. In the very beginning, Jonas, you cut out on me, so I couldn't hear, like, the first seven words. If you could just uh, give me those first seven words, I'm sorry. It just cut out on me. That's okay. Um, so the lack of preparation that you had mentioned um, earlier on as, as to, some, you know, going into FAU, you felt that you were there was a lack of preparation in, in the end result. Um, is that because of – the travel and it being a travel week or is it just a lack of film and game and game tape on their current roster this year as they only had two games under their belt? Uh, what, how, what, how did I, how did I use the, I'm sorry, Jones, I'm not trying to be a smart. How did I use the, how did I use the term lack of preparation? That doesn't sound like, how did I, did I how did I reference that? I'm, I'm trying to understand how I use that word, those words. Uh, it was when you were talking about, um, when you were answering the two questions coming out of last week and why you couldn't run the ball better and why you couldn't protect the quarterback better, you said there was a miscommunication on lineups and the FAU um, on the team and then the FAU scheme that they were giving you. You said that um, maybe just a lack of preparation on your part. Uh, you, kind of, you owned that. And so I was just kind of curious, what do you think played into that? Was it a lack of film on this current roster or was it maybe just you know a travel week and, and going into that Right, I, I, I don't remember now. Thank you for referencing that. When, whenever I say anything like that, uh, what, what that means for me, if my kids 
have seen it in practice and we've rep the rep, I just feel like I've given them what they need to be successful. Whenever they see something that I didn't give them, I always feel personally responsible for that. And I thought that FAU did a good job with their pressure on giving us a couple of looks that I did not get our kids ready for. Uh, it was a veteran defensive coordinator that just pulled a couple of tricks out of his pocket uh, that I had not shown our players. And where that hurts, not that you all don't understand, but I'm just trying to help here. When you are changing your offensive line around all the time, somewhere along the way, that's why veteran players and veteran teams play so well. Like, for example, if that lineup had been the same all year, we have seen those looks at some point during the season, but there's no carryover because you changed again. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, we, when you're changing up so much and you're new, you, you, you can't afford anything to not go just exactly right. If they do anything different that we haven't worked on, I will always own that. Uh, and that's what I meant. There was a couple of looks I felt bad. I just didn't give our kids. Uh, so we didn't get it communicated very well. Gotcha. And so that uh, just to kind of elaborate on, on your, your answer a little bit further, would you kind of compare that to um, having to keep restarting a semester of learning every time you make a change on that line, you can't move forward with new content because you have to go back to the basics and how the line gels as you move guys in and out and in different positions. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I just, I think you can tell where my heart is. My heart's always with my guys and my players. And uh, the reason we have been successful in, in, in my career is my players have always believed in me because I, I, I try my best to give them the best opportunity to always win. And uh, when we say win the day, we literally try to win the day. We try to go out there. Uh, we're having to practice tonight because the election is tomorrow. Uh, so we're working our tails off right now to make sure our kids get every single look that Rice is going to give us. Now, this is a very veteran group, and they do a ton of stuff. Rice does. They're an over. They're an under. They're an odd. They're bare. They're wide. They bring. They do it all. And uh, that's going to be a – really, really uh, tedious task for Coach Maddox to get that offensive line ready for all the looks they're going to see this week. And, and if you do roll forward with the same unit, that, again, kind of speaks to being able to build upon what they saw last week and add more content and more to, um, you know, their experience and what they could be prepared for. So you're looking to maybe not just – do so much of what you did last week would build upon that now moving forward with the, with consistency on the line. Yeah. It's just, there's only so many ways you can do it. It's just, it's not like our plays or, you know, you're going to run inside zone, outside zone, power counter, some option game in there. You know, ball is ball. Uh, when you're ahead of the chains and it's third and two, third and four, um, that's when you just see normal defense. When you get to third and six, third and seven, that's when all the exotic blitzes come. We have to see – we got to do a better job on first and second down to stay out of those third and plus. Uh, that's when we've been very successful this year. And we've got to get that. And, and But guess what? Teams are studying us. they got eight games on us now. They now know we've got to make them throw the football uh, down the field. And let's see what happens. And uh, we're going to have to make people pay when they do that. Which, guess what? If you hit it, you score. And if you don't, it's second and ten. And now y'all are all going, they need to get sincere the ball. So now there's nine in the box. And you hand it off. Now it's third and eight. So guess what? You're getting the best blitz they had all week. And they've worked it. And they've kept it in their back pocket. Coach Nix does the same thing on the other side of the ball. I mean, it's, uh, it's just that's just the game. So. Yeah, we hope we can have the same five out there we had last week. We just tested for COVID this morning. We'll test again Thursday and Friday and see what lineup we roll out there with this Saturday. If you watch, so everybody's 
battling the same stuff. Everybody is. If right. they got all their players back, that hurt us. They're, 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 they just got their kids back. So we didn't get to play the same team the, the week before we got to play. Right. Uh, last question here uh, on my end, Coach. Um, eight straight games, four more to go, November to remember. Uh, you're going up against another fresh team in Rice. This is just going to be their third game. What more, and you said a lot, you know, I need to do more. What more can you do for uh, asking of these guys that, that's, you know, no bye week in this season and it's a grind to the finish. What more can you do um, to push through that last four games? Well, we didn't tackle very well. We had 28 missed tackles and we didn't protect very well. So I, I made the decision we're going we're going to pad back up and we're going we're going to go we're going to go harder, and uh, I know that's probably risky, but I really challenged our guys last night. If we want this to be a November to remember, we just got to suck it up four more weeks. And uh, I am I, I am very proud of our players. What they've done is unbelievable. Uh, I think there's two teams in the entire country that have played eight straight games. Uh, or maybe, yeah, uh, I'm not sure if they played eight straight. I know they played eight. They think there's two of us. I'm surprised Greg hadn't fact-checked me on that yet. I, I'm waiting for him to tell me the real truth here any moment. Um, but that's a remarkable deal. And there, if we're a first-year coach and a new program, we needed that so bad. Uh, obviously, I want to get these kids as far as I can get them. Uh, but if you told me this summer uh, that we were going to play eight straight, and be sitting here four and four going in November, I think everybody on the screen would have said, we'll take that. Let, let's see what we can do. And that's how we're looking at it. We won't, we're in position to go make this in November to remember because of what we've done in June, July, August, September, and October. Gotcha. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. And Coach is correct. It is us in Texas State. Only teams with eight games. <clears throat> Hey, thank you. Kyle's the one that did it. Did, that, did you know that before, Greg? If so, I'm really going to be impressed. I'm not sure if I knew it before him, but I wanted to get it in before him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and since we're covered, I don't even have to reveal whether I knew that or not. You'll never, you'll never know. Kyle's <laughs> Dang, I blew it, Greg. <laughs> so uh, one thing you mentioned on the radio show last week was that, that Frank's been practicing harder on the Titan data you guys get in practice. I'm wondering if you can see a difference or what's been, when, been different there. Uh, yeah, it's, he's on in the moment. Um, you know, when he got injured again and he had to miss that time, it just reminded him again how valuable it is to play. And uh, um, he didn't like being pulled for JoJo, but he understood what we were doing this time. Uh, so we, we've grown there. Uh, our team, uh, we handled this loss better than we did at UAB. Uh, we are maturing. We are getting better. I know it didn't look that way because of the score. Um, but a lot of that's because of him and his maturity and how very hard he competed. His teammates saw how hard he competed. And uh, I, I was I was proud of him on the, during the game. Uh, but when I watched the video, I was more proud of him. Oh, there's some plays he wished he had back? Yes. He'll, he'll be the first one to tell you that. But he played and competed very hard. And uh, if we all played that hard, um, the outcome probably would have been different. How's Josh Adkins doing in his recovery process? I think it was four weeks ago we were looking at four to six weeks. Yeah, I, it's funny you said that. I couldn't sleep last night. And uh, I just started counting. And I'm like, okay, UAB was the fourth game. And this is the ninth game, so it's got to be five weeks Saturday by my simplistic math. And it's crazy that you ask that. Uh, he is getting better. He has not been cleared yet, uh, but he is getting better. We talked over the summer about voting and all the social justice issues, and you just mentioned kind of changing practice because of it. How are you guys approaching that, that this week? How is that impacting your preparation? Uh, we, we, we finally got a routine, and now we're out of it again. So 2020 is – it's a, a year. It's a year to remember for sure. Uh, we want November to. It might be a year to forget. Let me let me <laughs> let me let me back off that. Um, you know, we just decided to go in the evening. The kids are done uh, with tutorials and classes, so we pushed it back to tonight so we could all go vote tomorrow. That's an NCAA deal. 
So tomorrow's their day off. Uh, and we just had to adjust. It's the biggest deal is, you know, my coaches having to prep and get this ready for your base installs. And then we'll have all day Tuesday to get ready for third down, red zone, coming out, four minute, two minute. Do you guys have like an, uh, a voting kind of event plan that will all be at the student union at this time or how are you approaching it with the, with the players? Uh, we've already all voted. It's why I was not really in favor of this rule. It's a nice tribute. Everybody's off on Tuesday to go vote. I get it. But we, our kids have already all early voted. And uh, so uh, I don't know what they're going to do. I guess they're going to have their day off and study and get ready. They've all, they've all registered and they've all voted. How hard did you push that with them? Or what, what have the conversations been like through the weeks about voting and why it's important? You know, I have a great leadership council. Uh, it was elected by their teammates. Um, and my guys do so much to take care of our team. We're, we're, we're every day getting more and more player led. And uh, I think this generation uh, understands the power of the vote and how much power they have more than maybe any generation. Uh, these kids didn't even have to play. I think we've all kind of forgotten that. They could have all opted out. This year doesn't even count. They get to do it again if they want to. So I can't brag enough on them, Greg, on an election, uh, what's going on in, in our country. They get tested three times a week. That's not, it's not fun to start my morning off. I literally just – said you know the good news is if we don't make a bowl i only get this thing shut up my nose eight more times and i hopefully we make a bowl and i get it shut up my nose 23 more times uh, so you know what that's like every morning these are young men 18 22 years old and i'm really proud of them they just keep showing up and uh we don't like losing uh, we, we, we know we did not play well Saturday, but our kids just keep showing up and doing the right thing. I want to touch on a couple guys, maybe injuries or missing situations before we let you go. Uh, we saw Jamal Ligon didn't start the game. And maybe he came in in second quarter or third drive, it seemed like. Was there a situation there that led to that, or can you take me through that process? No, it was just it was competition-driven, and Tyler had a better week of practice, and so Tyler got, got rewarded. How about Jalen Haynes? We didn't see him in this one, and I know we were just talking about how he was kind of coming back and getting back into shape. Let me go back on that last one. And Jamal responded very well uh, when he got in the game. He played very well. So uh, he's a very high-character kid. Him and Tyler both are. And they're great competitors and just two guys competing for a job. And uh, But Jamal did play very well once he got in there. On, on country, uh, still just nicked up. Uh, be week to week with him. Uh, hopefully we can get him back this week, but we're not sure yet. And we saw Brendan Brady make his return, but his usage was pretty low. Is it just like specific packages where he fits, or is that just about getting back into shape? Uh, we just wanted to be smart on that field. It was wet. The surface was not very good. You know, ankle injury. You know, I, we weren't going to play Peter that much because of an ankle injury there on the second play and re-injured his ankle. Uh, it just kind of spooked me a little bit with Brendan, and uh, I just wanted to get him on better surface uh, before I, I let him play more. If Brendan's 100%, how would you like to see the carry split with him in Sincere? What do you think that looks like in an ideal world? Um, you know, I hate to ever get too specific on that kind of stuff because it just pins you down. Uh, he's a really good back, and he's going to play. And what that looks like, uh, we'll just kind of see how that goes. Uh, but there's no doubt it'll make Sincere better and him better. Uh, I've used the analogy of boxers. There's only so many punches in those guys. Uh, running backs the same way. You know, it's just Sincere will never say it. But carrying the ball 37 times the week before uh, took something from him Saturday. I don't care what he says. It, it just had to happen. Uh, so we don't, we would like to spread some of that out. Got it. Thanks, Jeff. Thank y'all. All right. Thanks coach. Uh, thanks everyone. <clears throat>
God bless. Birds up.